Hi there and welcome to another video. Today I am going to show you a little thing that I have learned recently about the Fetch API using Next.js and it's something I wish I'd known earlier because it will help with basically new projects but if you have a, a large project it could also help you there and what it is is when we fetch data the default for the fetch API is to cache that data and sometimes that's annoying for example if you upload an image or something and you want to see that change reflected immediately you don't want that to be cached obviously it is better to have that certain data cached because or at least certain uh, API requests cached because it can reduce the intensity on the CPU and the resources and the load that you have on server resources. It is beneficial to have caching on your fetch requests, but at the same time, it can be quite annoying if you want to see data updating in real time or at least on the next subsequent request. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how I do that now. So I set the, the cache on a global level to no cache and then that means for every fetch request in the project we will basically set the the caching configuration on a pair request basis to default to caching that request so that every subsequent request gets the same data and that usually is for like a not an infinite amount of time but a certain amount of time the default caching usually takes a while for it to update. So let's get into it. As you can see, I've got these products and this is just a simple Next.js project that I've set it up using Create Next app and I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, we've got basic Next.js projects set up using Create Next app and I have set up an API endpoint and this is basically just to mimic what you would do. So this could be ac actually, this could be any API endpoint. It could be something where you might be getting some crypto data or something from some external source. But what I'm doing is I'm just mimicking any API. It just happens to be within the same project. And this could be absolutely anything, this API endpoint. So we've got our page and we've got our products page which does a fetch request to the api forward slash products which is here and we are getting a list of products and we're just sending them back our json and then we are getting the json and we're putting it into a products table now get rid of this So you can see here it's coming in product name, product description, currency. What we want to do is we want to, to test how this caching works. So, so this is actually, you know, server side fetch request. So actually this is all happening on the server. It's in a React server component. So we're not going to be able to see any network tab fetch requests in here because as I said, it's all happening in the Next.js server, not in the browser. It's not sending a fetch request from the client to the... So, so you could really, if you really wanted to, you could just, it doesn't really make sense in this context to fetch a list of products. Say if we were getting them from our database, it doesn't really make sense to, to do what we're doing here. It only really makes sense in the context of fetching data from an external source. Because what we do is we just do const products equals await database dot fetch and then you'd get the products in here. You wouldn't need to do an API call necessarily. But for the demo purposes, we are doing this. We're getting the products and if I go into these products and I just remove one, save it, and then I go back here, refresh, you'll see nothing's happening right it hasn't deleted the product and next.js does have this revalidate revalidate property on 
here. So we do revalidate. You can see we've got this revalidate and this is the, the interval it takes for us to, for, for it to basically clear the, the cache. And so if I revalidate this fetch request and I make it revalidate in 10 seconds and then I do root. Okay. And then I, so I've got two products there. If I bring back this one. You'll see still two products keep refreshing and then, okay, 10 seconds later, it brings in this one. So that's all good, but there's another thing, right? We've got this cache and you have to, you can either specify this cache property or the revalidate property. You can't do both at the same time, but if I do no cache, you'll see that there's three products. And when I delete one, there's two products, right? So basically not caching the data here, but rather than having to specify no cache for X amount of requests, I would just want to do a global no cache. And the way we do that is we go into our layout, our global layout. So this is the one in our root, the root of our project in the app folder. And then we do export const fetch cache. You can see there we've got this. The fetch cache option controls how Next.js statically caches, caches fetches. By default, it statically caches fetches reachable before any dynamic hooks are used, and it doesn't cache fetches that are discovered after that. So we've got all these options here. And what we want to do, or at least in my case, what I would typically do, is default no store because this allows any explicit cache option to be passed into fetch. But if default or no option is provided, then it defaults to no store. This means even fetches before a dynamic hook are considered dynamic. We do this fetch cache equals default no store. That means I don't have to specify that. So if we get three, we delete one. And you can see there's two. So there we go. We don't have to specify this. We can just remove that and it will always fetch. It will always make a new fetch request each time. It will never just cache the fetch request. That's ideal. But then what if we want to revalidate next? Revalidate every 30 seconds, or let's just say 60 seconds to give us enough time. So we want to revalidate every 60 seconds. We've got two products, refresh. When we add this new product 60 seconds later, we can get that product. As you can see, we're just waiting. Just keep waiting. Maybe should have done this a bit less, but for the purposes of the demo, I just thought I'd show you. Still waiting for this. And there it is. 60 seconds later, it works. The next revalidate still works. However, when we remove that, and now we've got three products, we fetch that, and then we delete one, and it's gone. That, I thought, was a really neat way to just default to not caching absolutely everything. If you've got a big project like I have, I've got other large client projects that I've migrated to the app router and I've migrated from uh, React query to just using the plain fetch because it's useful. There's things like deduping, which means it never duplicates the the fetch request like runs it twice. It just always runs it once. It's the default way I think should be using fetch. Arguably we can use a tool like react query and in certain cases it might be useful, but in the case where we use the fetch API, it is great and it's fast performant. It's the default way to, to do fetching and it's annoying at times where caches the data by default. So. This was a good, cool little way to 
prevent that from happening on a global level and then you can go ahead and set it on a request basis thought that would be useful for sure and share if you found it useful please let me know leave any comments and give me a thumbs up if you are so kind and thank you for watching